you really want to separate yourself and make a great, great product, go for the real stuff. Absolutely. Now, here's a product. I'm not going to show the name. But I'm going to ask the gentleman up front to read what it says. What's that product called? Number 399 ICC Dreamsicle. Okay. That is a gallon jug of flavoring to make creamsicle ice cream. You just, and I could use all these chemicals and make a good product, or I can use fresh frozen orange juice and make a spectacular product. The only thing I'm going to add to this orange juice is going to be some sugar and um, my ice cream mix. So that's what Jeff's saying. Now, another interesting thing that you people from, uh, not at, from Florida might not know is I used uh, frozen concentrate. This is Minute Maid country style. That means it's got some pulp in it. The orange growing, so I don't use fresh oranges. The orange growing season in Florida here is from November till the end of March. In November, the oranges are bitter, they're horrible, nobody buys them. At the end of the March, they're like eating candy. They're, they're so good. So Minute Maid has to stay in business, so does Tropicana and so does all the other companies. So they buy the orange crop November, December, January, February, March, and then they blend it all together so that they come out with a consistent, there's that word, like Jeff's file cards, there comes a consistent product. So I can make a better, fresh orange juice, more consistent year round by using frozen concentrate. That's why I do it. And you saw me, all I did was mix it with the three cans of water, and I did that for two cans, so now I've got a little over uh, three quarts of orange juice here. And that's what's in my recipe. I'm going to use uh, a half a quart of ice cream mix. Could I trouble you for the half a quart ice cream mix? Sure, just one more thing. Mm -hmm. And you know when they make this, when the scientists and the chemists make this, they overdo it. This is too coconutty. Yeah. They overcompensate for it. And as a result, she won't like it because she grew up with real coconut. Okay, what do you need a half a quart? Half a quart of ice cream mix. And I'm going to get a one, pa one pound of mix? sugar right there. Oh. Now, I'm going to get a pound of sugar, and I want to Can tell you about right sugar. Here? <laughs> Let me get another sugar here. Choke it. Grab it by this. Here and is, it up and choke it. And then here is take Domino it and sugar, it and it comes in this nice package, and Domino is a well-brand name, and you pay a small Hard fortune for this compared to the stuff I bought at the supermarket. Uh, the, we, our supermarkets down here are called Publix. This is the store brand. Guess what? These the both out. came out of the same sugar refinery. They're the identical product. At this, this is about two-thirds the cost of this. Here I'm paying for a name and packaging. Don't do it. Sugar is sugar is sugar. So just buy the cheapest sugar you can find, and you'll do uh, just fine. Uh, a lot of Italian ices... Yes, please. A lot of Italian ices are, uh, like I said, sugar, water, and orange juice. I'm not using any water here. Uh, but it's a good question. If I'm making a cherry, uh, a lemon ice, it's seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, and two quarts of lemon juice. That recipe, along with all our recipes, are on my website for free. Um, but people say, <laughs> do I have to um, purify the water? Well, the answer is yes and no. Uh, we have a couple of gentlemen here from Barbados. Um, if they are selling Italian ice to people who live in Barbados and grew up in Barbados, they do not have to purify the water because the people of Barbados have been drinking it all their life. Uh, they know what the water tastes like. They're used to. It's fine. Now, here, here comes a New Yorker like me, and I've been to Barbados. Uh, I come down on vacation, and uh, I'm not used to the water. It tastes so different from New York that uh, if I drink a glass of water, it, it doesn't taste right to me. There's nothing wrong with the water. It's different. Uh, so in that case, if all my customers were tourists coming down from the United States, I would purify the water uh, so that it has a more neutral taste. Here in Brooksville, Florida, which is in the middle of nowhere, uh, we're famous for uh, wild hogs and uh, horses and uh, deer and anteaters, and that's about it. No, no people, no tourists. There's never been a tourist come to Brooksville except you folks. Uh, so I don't purify the water because everybody, and the water here is terrible. It's like liquid rock. It's, it's got so much mineral in it. Uh, a lot of calcium, too, from uh, being Florida. And so the water is terrible, but everybody is used to it, so I don't have to purify the water. If I go down to Miami 
Everybody from Miami is a tourist, from New York or Chicago uh, or Philadelphia. I have to purify the water because it doesn't taste like what they're used to. Uh, it's like if, if you talk to a New Yorker, we'll tell you the only way you can make a bagel is with New York water. You cannot make a bagel with any other water. And that's the, that's the God honest truth. Um, there, there are no other bagels except made with New York water. But the Italian ice, it's, it's not as critical. So I've got my little bit of ice cream mix in here. Uh, I'm going to add my sugar. Sugar dissolves very nicely in cold water. You don't need hot water. It's going to dissolve just fine. And I want to do it in the bucket because sugar is very coarse, and if you throw it into a machine, it acts like sandpaper. The machine can take it, but instead of getting five years' life out of the blades, maybe you're only going to get uh, three years. So I mix it up first uh, right in here. Now, ice cream. Well, yes, question. Great question. Yeah, but no, it won't curdle. No, but uh, as with everything, pour it in slowly and mix while you're pouring it in, and that'll stop it. He doesn't know that. And remember, my uh, mix has been pasteurized, so it's not likely. And it's also been homogenized. We've no, taken that. No, that doesn't matter. But uh, it's, it's not being pasteurized, it's not going to curdle. What was and the we're question? Not any heat. When I make custard, which I heat up the mix, and, that's and why. then I add my eggs very slowly. But eggs will cause curdling. But not this. Steve? Yes. What was the question? <laughs> uh, will the um, dairy in here curdle in with the sugar and water? Now, um, let me just go off screen here for a second and grab a squeeze cup. This is, uh, this is the way we eat it uh, in New York and Chicago, Philadelphia. We call that a squeeze cup. Uh, if you ask your paper supplier for a squeeze cup, he's going to look at you like a deer in the headlights. It's a pleated water cup, pleated water cup, made by Solo, S-O-L-O. Um, the beauty of Italian ice is, well, let me just say, ice cream, uh, after it's been made and freezes for a while, the flavor blooms. It gets stronger. It gets better. Italian ice doesn't. It's what you taste is what you get. So I know that when I just mixed this, there was a little bit more orange juice in the ratio than I had planned. So I'm going to taste it and see if it's still going to taste right and freeze. Or do I want to modify it now? No, that's good. So we'll go ahead and freeze it. You had a question? No? Okay. I'm going to use the CB350. And that I sanitized before you all came in this morning. I left the bigger one so you could see it. Thank you. Check that the gate's closed. Now, air is not really a factor in water products. Uh, you need dairy in order for you to have air. Uh, if, you take this, if you take sugar water and flavor and put it in ice cube trays, remember those things, and freeze it, you'll see your ice cubes crown over. They crown over about 17%. Water expands 17% when it freezes. That's why if you uh, leave your car without antifreeze in it, the engine block cracks because the water expands. That's really very little expansion. We might get a little more expansion out of this because we did put some dairy in, but for the most part, you just run it at full speed. So I'm going to start this up. I'm going to pick Italian ice, start, and that's running. Turn on the refrigeration, and we're good to go. Here. Thank you. Um, now, Jeff was talking about fresh flavors, and that's why what we call this, make it fresh. And he's absolutely right. Anytime you can make it fresh, that's the very best way to do it. There, is one, there are one or two exceptions. Uh, people have gotten much more savvy than when I was growing up. When Jeff and I were growing up, we ate <coughs> bright red Italian ice, bright yellow Italian ice, uh, uh, bright green Italian ice. That's what attracted us to it as kids. Now parents are smarter. They know that's red dye 40, yellow 17, you know, uh, green 26. It's, a, it's nothing but a color. It's a chemical. So uh, the Italian ices, for the most part, uh, if I make a strawberry Italian ice, it's going to be a pale pink color. But most of the consumers nowadays are going to know that's a fresh ice without a lot of garbage in it. If demand, now Jeff's business is open uh, nights only, and, and, is, and the, the audience is adults. 
Um, if I'm selling Italian ice on a street corner and I'm selling to a lot of kids, they may want uh, bubble gum. They may want uh, cotton candy. Now, there are no bubble gum trees growing in Florida or anywhere else. So in that case, you would have to use an extract because that's the only way you're going to get bubble gum or you're going to tell people, no, I don't sell, I don't sell that product. I'd rather have it and just say to the mother, you know, that's not all natural. And she's going to say back, yeah, but that's the only thing that's going to keep little Johnny from screaming his head off because he wants bubblegum Italian ice. As your business gets bigger, you're going to make more money and you're going to buy bigger equipment. Jeff started with a CB350 and he now runs uh, twice the size of this, a 24 quart. Um, he didn't have the money for the 24 quart to begin with, quite frankly. He made money off this machine. He grew the business. It made money, and then he says, I've got to cut my time down. I have to come, become more efficient. The one thing that Jeff and me and Donald Trump all have in common is we only have 24 hours in the day. And in that 24 hours, we got to sleep sometime. The rest of it, we happen to devote to work because we love it. It's, it's not work, it's a, it's a passion. Uh, but if we can work smarter and more efficiently, uh, we're going to do it. So. Uh, I brought this out three years ago. We've uh, sold over 3,500 of them to people who, quite frankly, were out of a job. They didn't want to go on welfare. They wanted to get into the Italian ice business and didn't have a whole lot of money. This is under $10,000. That's a lot of money. Uh, but it gets them into the Italian ice business. They might run it 16, 18 hours a day. But if they're running this machine 18 hours a day, they're making a pot full of money. They're supporting their family and it's getting them into business. And now every single one of them is starting to come back after three years and they're saying, I need a bigger machine because I can't run 18 hours a day. And my wife wants me to sleep a little more or at least spend some time with the kids. So they buy a bigger machine. I say, great, sell me back the CB350. Not on your life. I'm keeping it because we're thinking of doing a small store 25 miles away and rather than ship the product or uh, we run a, uh, a line of say kosher ices for a specialty shop and we're going to keep that machine uh, kosher or um, uh, we're, there's just a million different reasons that they keep the machine. Nobody gives up an Emory Thompson. That's why there are no used Emory Thompsons anywhere. I get about, Jeff, I get about eight calls a day for used machines and I work six days a week. That comes out to about 2,400 calls a year just for used machines and there's only been one uh, in the months of uh, July, August and September. So they're not there, uh, but it gets you into business. It gets you making money. Uh, this is looking nice. Now, remember, there's no artificial color in here. Uh, that's a beautiful product. I'm going to turn off the refrigeration and grab a spatula. Now watch carefully because it happens quickly. Look at that come out. Isn't that beautiful? Boy, I, I gotta show this to Paul. We're gonna paint a kitchen this room color. I like this. And I'll bet it tastes good too. And again, that was frozen concentrated orange juice, sugar, and uh, a little bit of the ice cream mix. If you left the ice cream mix out, it would just have a little bit more texture. Uh, that would be the only difference. And that's my six quarts of Italian ice. So now, since I just made orange, I would have started with lemon and then made orange because they're both citric and any leftover lemon, which is only about uh, four ounces, um, would mix in with this product. From here, I could go to uh, cherry and then grape, then black raspberry, and then I would rinse out the machine. It's that simple. So come on up and try this, and then I hope you're saving up a lot of questions because we're going to have a sit down and answer some questions, then we're going to have lunch, and then just going to make more product for you. And that I sanitized before you all came in this morning. I left the bigger one so you could see it. Thank you. Check that the gate's closed. 
Now, air is not really a factor in water products. Uh, you need dairy in order for you to have air. Uh, if you take this, if you take sugar water and flavor and put it in ice cube trays, remember those things, and freeze it, you'll see your ice cubes crown over. They crown over about 17%. Water expands 17% when it freezes. That's why if you uh, leave your car without antifreeze in it, the engine block cracks because the water expands. That's really very little expansion. We might get a little more expansion out of this because we did put some dairy in, but for the most part, you just run it at full speed. So I'm going to start this up. I'm going to pick Italian ice, start, and that's running. We'll turn on the refrigeration, and we're good to go. Here. Thank you. Um, now, Jeff was talking about fresh flavors, and that's why what we call this, make it fresh. And he's absolutely right. Anytime you can make it fresh, that's the very best way to do it. There, is one, there are one or two exceptions. Uh, people have gotten much more savvy than when I was growing up. When Jeff and I were growing up, we ate <coughs> bright red Italian ice, bright yellow Italian ice, uh, uh, bright green Italian ice. That's what attracted us to it as kids. Now parents are smarter. They know that's red dye 40, yellow 17, you know, uh, green 26. It's, a, it's nothing but a color. It's a chemical. So uh, the Italian ices, for the most part, uh, if I make a strawberry Italian ice, it's going to be a pale pink color. But most of the consumers nowadays are going to know that's a fresh ice without a lot of garbage in it. If demand, now Jeff's business is open uh, nights only and, and, is, and the, the audience is adults. Um, if I'm selling Italian ice on a street corner and I'm selling to a lot of kids, they may want uh, bubble gum. They may want uh, cotton candy. Now, there are no bubble gum trees growing in Florida or anywhere else. So in that case, you would have to use an extract because that's the only way you're going to get bubble gum or you're going to tell people, no, I don't sell, I don't sell that product. I'd rather have it and just say to the mother, you know, that's not all natural. And she's going to say back, yeah, but that's the only thing that's going to keep little Johnny from screaming his head off because he wants bubblegum Italian ice. So that is your alternative that on some flavors, uh, some of these extracts you will use uh, to uh, make a flavor. Yes? Uh, yeah, I do. In fact, let me go back and look. Uh, I think I do. Cream ice. There we go. Thank you. Took the speed down by 234 RPMs. Uh, so yes, we do have the cream ice to compensate. You're right, to compensate for the dairy. I don't want it to, to blow up too much. Now, the higher the sugar content of a product, the longer it takes to freeze. Vanilla, is, vanilla ice cream is your fastest freezing product at about seven and a half, eight minutes. Um, a chocolate Italian ice or a cherry Italian ice is going to be all the way at the other end of the spect spectrum at about 18 minutes. Uh, ice cream, vanilla ice cream is high in fat, relatively speaking, and low in sugar. Ice cream, or Italian ices rather, are high in sugar and uh, low in fat or zero fat. Uh, most cases, zero fat unless it's a cream ice. So the higher the sugar content, the longer the freezing time. Uh, so that's why it's 18 minutes instead of eight. A lot of people ask, how do you make uh, a rainbow ice? That's a, one that's uh, popular with children. And in the short run, in the simplest form, what you can do is, uh, you ever buy a case of wine and uh, they've taken the cardboard and slit the cardboard halfway and then so you have a piece going this way and a piece going this way and it makes the little boxy compartments to put the wine in. We're going to do the same idea. We're going to take a piece of cardboard, slit it halfway down on both of them and then put it into, uh, into here, dividing it into three compartments. Is it the most sanitary way to do it? Absolutely not. Uh, but we've got, we're only going to use it one time. So I've got about four or five containers divided into uh, three compartments. So I'm going to make a batch of lemon ice and I'm going to fill one compartment, one compartment, one compartment, one compartment, put it in the freezer. Go make my cherry ice, pull them out of the freezer, fill the second compartment, uh, put it back in the freezer, make my third product, blue ice, and uh, I think blue ice is black raspberry. I, I think it's awful. Uh, 
uh, and I'm going to fill the blue ice. And then now I've got all three flavors in the tub. I pull out the cardboard, and when I go to scoop the ice, I go in a semicircular motion like this, hitting all three flavors. If it turns out to be popular, you get someone to make it out of plastic or stainless steel, something that you can put into the washing machine and uh, just um, you know, have it divided into three sections. If you're using stainless steel, uh, one nice little trick is just to rub it gently with some good olive oil uh, so that uh, the ices, when you go to pull it out, it won't stick to it. And that's how you can make a nice cream ice. Now, uh, keeping in mind with Jeff's mantra of business to spend as little money as possible, if you're doing a push cart, uh, the best push carts, the best company is Nelson Manufacturing. Nelson makes a beautiful cart. Uh, it, is, it plugs in. It's got a refrigeration unit, and it's double-walled. On the outside is the wall you see. On the inside is the cold wall that's going to the ice. And in between is salt water, uh, what we call brine, B-R-I-N-E. And we freeze down the salt water overnight, and then we take the push cart out, no electricity, and we're selling from the cart all day long. That, that's a great system, but that's expensive. Let me go off camera and I'll show you what I found. And I'll pass it around. This is made by a company called Carlisle. And there's a business, there's lots of businesses on the internet. There's one called the Web, uh, web, uh, web Restaurant Equipment, I think it is. Web, WebRestaurantEquipment.com. But there's other places. This is made by Carlisle. Have you ever uh, made a lunch for a child and you throw in a block of blue ice to keep the sandwich cold? Um, that's just filled with plain old water that you froze down. Uh, this takes it a step further, and this is an outer wall and an inner wall, and you can, I think you can see it's getting cold. It's so cold, uh, I put it into the freezer last night. That glycol in there, or the salt water, I think this one's glycol, it's double walled and it's frozen solid in here overnight. There's my source of refrigeration. Here's my tub of lemon ice right in there and I've tested it. I can go about five hours uh, scooping from this uh, with my um, lemon ice in there without it melting. So that's about $90 uh, from the web store and uh, web restaurant supply. And if you bought five or six of these, you're now in the Italian ice business. Uh, I'll pass that around so you can see it. I think that's a really cool idea and an inexpensive alternative to buying a refrigeration unit. As your business gets bigger, you're going to make more money and you're going to buy bigger equipment. Jeff started with a CB350 and he now runs uh, twice the size of this, a 24 quart. Um, he didn't have the money for the 24 quart to begin with, quite frankly. He made money off this machine. He grew the business. It made money, and then he says, I've got to cut my time down. I have to come, become more efficient. The one thing that Jeff and me and Donald Trump all have in common is we only have 24 hours in the day. And in that 24 hours, we got to sleep sometime. The rest of it, we happen to devote to work because we love it. It's, it's not work, it's a, it's a passion. Uh, but if we can work smarter and more efficiently, uh, we're going to do it. So. Uh, I brought this out three years ago. We've uh, sold over 3,500 of them to people who, quite frankly, were out of a job. They didn't want to go on welfare. They wanted to get into the Italian ice business and didn't have a whole lot of money. This is under $10,000. That's a lot of money. Uh, but it gets them into the Italian ice business. They might run it 16, 18 hours a day. But if they're running this machine 18 hours a day, they're making a pot full of money. They're supporting their family and it's getting them into business. And now every single one of them is starting to come back after three years and they're saying, I need a bigger machine because I can't run 18 hours a day. And my wife wants me to sleep a little more or at least spend some time with the kids. So they buy a bigger machine. I say, great, sell me back the CB350. Not on your life. I'm keeping it because we're thinking of doing a small store 25 miles away and rather than ship the product or uh, we run a, uh, a line of say kosher ices for a specialty shop and we're going to keep that machine uh, kosher or um, uh, we're, there's just a million different reasons that they keep the machine. Nobody gives up an Emory Thompson. That's why there are no used Emory Thompsons anywhere. I get about, Jeff, I get about eight calls a day for used machines and I work six days a week. That comes out to about 2,400 calls a year just for used machines and there's only been one 
uh, in the months of uh, July, August, and September. So they're not there. Uh, but it gets you into business. It gets you making money. Uh, this is looking nice. Now, remember, there's no artificial color in here. Oh, that's a beautiful product. I'm going to turn off the refrigeration and grab a spatula. Now watch carefully because it happens quickly. Look at that come out. Isn't that beautiful? Boy, I, I got to show this to Paul. We're going to paint a kitchen this room color. I like this. And I'll bet it tastes good too. And again, that was frozen concentrated orange juice, sugar, and uh, a little bit of the ice cream mix. If you left the ice cream mix out, it would just have a little bit more texture. Uh, that would be the only difference. And that's my six quarts of Italian ice. So now, since I just made orange, I would have started with lemon and then made orange because they're both citric and any leftover lemon, which is only about uh, four ounces, um, would mix in with this product. From here, I could go to uh, cherry and then grape then black raspberry, and then I would rinse out the machine. It's that simple. So come on up and try this, and then I hope you're saving up a lot of questions because we're gonna have a sit down and answer some questions, then we're gonna have lunch, and then just gonna make more product for you.